Hey, Dr. Lucas Marchand, the house call chiropractor here in Sioux Falls, and today we're going to go over the chapter on the elusive benefits of exercise. So stay tuned. So Gary Taubes invites us to imagine that we are invited to a, a celebrity dinner, a monumental feast of epic proportions. There's going to be great food, celebrity chefs. Uh, so what you're supposed to do is bring your appetite. You should come hungry. Then he asks us, what would you do to come hungry to an evening dinner? Some of us might skip breakfast. Some of us might eat a light lunch or even skip lunch. Uh, some of us, we might even, you know, go on a morning stroll. We might, you know, hit one more workout before the dinner. We might lift some weights. We might play around a round of golf. We might do all these things to work up an appetite. Right? where that saying came from. It's been around for centuries is working up an appetite, right? Doing things to become hungry, right? Which is kind of going against what we say is necessary to lose weight or maintain weight. And what we say now is we need to exercise more and eat less. But the whole point of exercising, or at least some of, one of the side effects of exercising, is that it causes you to become more hungry. You walk up a flight of stairs, 20 flights of stairs, and you burn, or you do the Stairmaster, and you burn 250 calories in a half hour session. Later, you, you know, you indulge and you have a slice of bread or some sandwich that's 250 calories. Well, why don't you just skip that workout and skip the bread and call it a day? A study done, done on ultra distant athletes and marathon runners. For years, while these people stayed lean, even the front runners of marathons, they're almost emaciated, they actually gain weight decade to decade. Let's say you're someone who is uh, running four miles a day, five days a week, 20 miles a week in your 20s. And by the time you're in your 30s, you're gonna need to almost double that just to maintain, let's just say you weigh 180 pounds, your 180 pound figure. Right? So now you'd have to up your mileage to eight miles a day, five days a week. And, and then it'd keep upping it as, uh, as you get older. So by the time you're in your uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, you'd be running you know, 16, 20 miles a day, supposedly just to maintain your weight. So these ultra distance athletes, these marathon runners, are still gaining weight over the years while doing, you know, expending excess amount of energy, burning all these calories, and it would suggest that maybe exercising isn't a function of maintaining your weight or losing weight. Much of the research out there uh, that promotes uh, exercise as a good form of losing weight or maintaining weight uh, is extremely biased. Uh, saying that uh, a group of people lost five or 10 pounds doing this exercise, and one of them was uh, a study where they took men and women who were overweight and obese and trained them to run an, uh, a marathon, which is, I believe, 26.1, 26.2, you might have to correct me there. And what they found after a year is, uh, well, or at least what they highlighted was the five pound weight loss of pure fat, which, you know, lost five pounds of fat, that's significant, I guess. But if after a year, you were overweight and you only lost five pounds, but you still trained to run a marathon and ultimately ran a marathon, would it be worth it? The thing that study didn't cite was the fact that none of the women in this study didn't lose any weight. So this idea of exercising um, for, you know, to lose weight or maintain your weight, it's been around for at least a century, probably longer. Physicians back in the 1800s were even suggesting that to their some of their overweight patients and found that it wasn't working so they told them to stop. William Banting who was a overweight uh, undertaker who had a hard time losing weight and if every time he did lose weight he'd gain it all back doing these various means of losing it back in the 1800s. And he wrote a letter on corpulence which you can probably google just type in letter on corpulence by William Banting and I'm sure it'll come up but his his physician friend told him to uh, start exercising more to lose weight. So he started taking up rowing in the morning. He would go on evening strolls um, and then afternoon walks. And what he found, according to William Banting himself from his own personal experience, was that while he did gain muscular endurance, he became stronger, more fit, he gained an, uh, a prodigious appetite. 
he was happy to indulge in that. So the more he exercised, the hungrier he got, and the more he ate, and therefore he gained weight, exercising more. I mean, you would lose weight if you were just bedridden. Mostly because you're losing muscle, but you would also probably lose some fat because you're probably not eating as much as you would be eating. I'm gonna finish up this video with just a paragraph from the final chapter here, or for the for this chapter. I just wanna read it because I think it just hits all the good points, so here we go. The history of science suggests another interpretation. People have been thinking about this idea, that is the idea of exercising to lose weight, for more than a century and trying to test it for decades and they still can't generate compelling evidence that it's true, it's probably not. We can't say it's not with absolute certainty because certainty, because science doesn't work that way. But we can say that there's now an exceedingly good chance it's simply wrong and one of the many seemingly reasonable ideas in the history of science that never panned out. And if reducing calories in doesn't make us lose weight, and if increasing calories out, which is exercising, doesn't even prevent us from gaining it, maybe we should rethink the whole thing and find out what does. So stay tuned for next week's chapter on the significance or the insignificance of eating 20 calories a day. What I want you to do is like and share this video. I'll click a, I'll put a, the playlist of the other videos up in, up in this corner here. And uh, like and share this video, comment below, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.